Hyundai construction equipment is designed to perform consistently at peak efficiency. To meet those rigorous demands, regular maintenance is essential. In this video, we'll review the basic maintenance procedures for Hyundai HL900A series wheel loaders, including inspection, lubrication, and making adjustments. Following these procedures will enhance the wheel loader's performance and longevity. Before operating or performing maintenance on HL wheel loaders, make sure you're thoroughly familiar with the operator's manual. It provides component specifications and other information that are crucial to maintaining the wheel loader's safe, optimal performance. Safety first is the top priority when operating and performing maintenance on any Hyundai construction equipment. Remember, almost all accidents are caused by disregarding simple safety precautions. Make sure to wear the proper protective clothing, including a hard hat, safety glasses, gloves, safety shoes, and ear protection, as well as any additional safety gear as the situation warrants. When needed, use the steering lock bar and the boom safety lock bar, and always follow the proper lockout tagout procedures. There are three scheduled intervals for operator maintenance procedures. Those which have to be done daily or after every 10 hours of operation. Next, those procedures which should be done weekly or every 50 hours. Finally, those that should be done monthly or after every 250 operating hours. To ensure an accurate reading when checking the hydraulic oil level, the wheel loader must be on a flat surface. Position the bucket against the ground. If the machine is running, switch it off and wait five minutes. Locate the hydraulic oil level sight gauge. When properly filled, the level should be in the middle of the gauge. When checking the engine oil level, the wheel loader must be on a flat surface. If the engine has been running, shut it off and wait 15 minutes. Remove the dipstick and wipe it off with a clean rag. Reinsert it fully, then pull it out to check the oil level. Normal oil levels will fall within the slightly indented area closest to the tip of the dipstick. If the level falls below that area, you need to add more oil. If the oil is above the indented area, drain oil out to achieve the optimal level. It is recommended to perform an oil scan analysis on extra oil removed to check for other possible contaminants. You should check the engine coolant level daily but also make sure to check it if your monitor gives you the fault code SPN111. You can monitor the level with the surge tank sight gauge. If the coolant level is below the low mark, or you've gotten the SPN111 fault code, add more coolant to the tank. Warning, never attempt to remove the coolant or the radiator cap if the engine is still hot and never add coolant to a hot engine. Wait until the engine is cool. There are several points to check each day. With the fuel system, you can monitor the fuel levels in the fuel tank gauge. You should inspect the fuel cap daily to ensure it hasn't been damaged. Before refueling, check the fuel strainer, which is located in the neck of the fuel tank. If it's dirty, clean it before adding more fuel. Make sure the cap fits tightly and locks securely. If you need to remove fuel, the drain is located on the bottom of the fuel tank. Here's a hint. When refueling, fill the tank to the top. This will help minimize water condensation overnight. Diesel exhaust fluid, or DEF, is a crucial factor in ensuring your wheel loader meets strict emissions requirements. You should check your DEF levels daily by the gauge located in the monitor. The best time to add more DEF fluid is at the beginning of the day. 
Before removing the cap, wipe off the top of the tank to avoid contamination, which is the main cause of DEF system failures. Keep an eye on the sight gauge to make sure you don't overfill the DEF tank and stop pouring in DEF when the float gets close to the full mark. The pre-filter trap or sediment bowl is a crucial component and should be inspected several times a day, depending on operating conditions. Make sure the bowl is never more than one-third full. The drain is located at the bottom of the pre-filter. Separator drains may vary depending on the engine configuration. To open the drain, turn the drain valve counterclockwise. After draining, turn the valve clockwise to close it. Procedures on the weekly maintenance schedule should be performed after every 50 hours of operation. There are multiple attachment pins which must be greased on a weekly basis. On all Z-Bar and XTD configurations, the bucket cylinder pin, the boom cylinder left and right pins, the boom to frame left and right pins, the boom cylinder left and right rod pins, the bucket cylinder rod pin, the bell crank pivot pin, the bucket link connection pins, and the bucket boom connection pins. You should shorten your lubrication intervals when working in wet or dusty environments. On TM configurations, the grease points are slightly different. You'll need to grease the quick coupler top and bottom connection pins on the left and right sides, the upper and lower bucket parallel link connection pins, the left and right bucket cylinder rod pins, the left and right boom cylinder rod pins, the left and right bucket cylinder pins, the left and right boom bell crank pivot pins, the left and right boom cylinder pins, the left and right boom mounting pins, and the front and rear parallel dog bone pins on the left and right sides. Again, on all models, you should shorten your lubrication intervals when working in wet or dusty environments. To check the transmission oil level properly, the wheel loader must be on a flat surface. For this procedure, the machine should be on and idling. The transmission oil must heat up between 80 and 90 degrees Celsius or between 176 and 194 degrees Fahrenheit in order to get an accurate reading. With the engine running, engage the parking brake, then shift into neutral. It's important to install the steering safety lock bar before the next step. Once the wheel loader is secured, Check the transmission oil fill gauge. It's located on the transmission oil dipstick tube. When the oil level is at operating temperature, the oil level should be between the two red marks. Note that when the engine is below 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit, the oil level should be at the blue line on the gauge. Maintaining correct tire pressure is crucial for optimal performance of the HL900A series wheel loader. Incorrect tire pressure is a primary factor in a shortened tire life. Always check the tire pressure at the beginning of the day or when the air in the tire is cold. Make sure the bucket is empty in order to get an accurate reading. The tire pressure should register at 60 PSI. It's important to examine the tire and clean off any excess oil grease or fuel. These can cause deformations in the tire when roading a machine. Before greasing the driveline, make sure the wheel loader is on a level surface. Make sure to use the steering lock bar for safety. You can grease these points on the component itself or on a remote grease block. Lubrication points vary depending on machine. Refer to the operator's manual for specific locations. On the HL980A and 970A models, you'll need to grease the rear axle pivots, the steering cylinder pins, the center pivot pins, the front sleeve yoke, the center sleeve yoke, 
the rear sleeve yoke, the upper sleeve yoke, and the center bearing. On the HL940A, 955A, 955A, TM, and 960A models, lubricate the rear axle pivot, the steering cylinder pins, the center pivot pins, the front flange bearing, the center sleeve yoke, and the rear sleeve yoke. Now we'll look at maintenance procedures that should be done monthly or after every 250 hours of operation. Checking the wheel lugs is a simple process. Make sure the machine is parked on a flat surface. First, walk around the machine and make sure there are no missing wheel mount nuts. Check the torque on each nut and adjust it if needed. You can find the torque specifications for your wheel loader in the operator's manual. The batteries should be checked monthly to ensure they have the proper voltage and haven't started to corrode. The machine should be off before you proceed. For your safety, also make sure to engage the battery disconnect switch before you touch the battery. Wait until the purge light goes off before doing this. Check the terminals for any signs of corrosion and clean them if needed. Check the voltage in the machine monitor. The ideal reading is 24 volts. If battery voltage is lower than 22 volts prior to starting, you may need to charge or replace a battery. Here's a tip. If the machine is not going to be operating for an extended period, using the battery disconnect switch will help extend the battery's life. Finally, check and clean the cabin AC filters. We'll start with the fresh air filter, which is located on the right side of the machine. Remove the filter and inspect it. You can use low pressure air less than 30 PSI to blow out this filter. To access the recirculation filter, open the filter compartment door on the right side of the machine. Remove the filter and inspect it. You can use low pressure air less than 30 PSI to blow out this filter before replacing the filter. Inspect the screen for tears or other damage and replace if necessary. Regular maintenance will help keep the HL900A wheel loader operating efficiently. Remember to always follow recommended safety guidelines when operating and performing maintenance. And make sure to thoroughly read and understand the operator's manual. Music